Hi everyone. Thank you. Thank you for coming this evening for this talk. Um, uh, and thank you for Alice for um, giving me the chance to show some uh, old work and new work. Um, so I'm, I want to show two, um, two bodies of work um, and they were um, both uh, collage, uh, bodies of collage work. Um, and the first, uh, they, sort of, they sort of link. I mean, I've sort of come back around some ideas that I was working with um, quite a long time ago. So uh, the first couple of collages were made back in around sort of 2005, 2006. Um, so I'm gonna just, um, I will just say, um, to everyone, we did a, a little screen test earlier and um, unfortunately the screen froze and the only way I could get out of it was to actually sort of close down my computer. So, and this happened while I was sharing my screen. So I apologize in advance if we have any sort of technical glitches, I just have to kind of reboot. But anyway, so this piece is called um, Melancholia. Are you? Let me get, put that right across. Um, and this piece is made from, so basically I, I started working with collage back in about sort of 2006. And um, I, I became really sort of interested in working with these sort of images um, of sort of sofas and sort of razors and sort of electric things. And um, and also I, I had these sort of big pile of old kind of sort of old fashioned magazines, sort of like sort of Vogue's. And I started to cut out um, a lot of sort of uh, uh, objects and and print from these from these magazines. Um, and I and I began to and I sort of recontouring them in a certain way. So they're quite sort of organic sort of forms or they suggest sort of geological formations and I and I I began to sort of paint in a way with these with these colors and tones and forms and I began to realize that actually by sort of manipulating the sort of scale um, and the tones and the shapes of the forms I could sort of create a sort of sense of, sort of classical space on paper um, so I, I, I basically I these are all cut out cut out shapes and forms and then sort of composed on paper um, and then sort of glued down so they as you can see there's lots of sort of sofas from Argus catalogues in there and sort of razors and different things um, and lots of these very quite sort of um, sort of melancholic um, um, and sort of restrained kind of greys and mauves that I used to find a lot in this kind of sort of fashion magazines and and I and I I mean, they, these are these these early collages. I think they're quite sort of post-apocalyptic. They sort of suggest the kind of aftermath of sort of some sort of disaster, some sort of flood, sort of flooding. Um, and I think that a lot of it was this was perhaps partly sort of reaction of of sort of my own sort of history of um, you know when I was, I sort of grew up in the seventies in sort of rural Norfolk. So I've always been really sort of interested in drawn to landscape. Um, and then I sort of, you know, I moved to London and I was, and my, I was in this sort of very sort of busy city environment. And I, and I, and, and I, and I thought about how I could sort of almost sort of translate this sort of city and all this sort of consumerism and all these sort of various sort of things around me into, into these, and sort of build these sort of quite sort of corrupted in sort of corrupted pastorals. Um, and I was also sort of really, I think now you can probably see this quite sort of clearly here, but I was really into sort of uh, Paul Nash, um, the painter Paul Nash. Um, it was really sort of influence on the work. Um, uh, and he, I don't know whether you know, I'm sure you all know Paul Nash's work, but he was one of the sort of war painters who made these sort of amazing paintings of sort of bombed sort of battlefields in France, um, there's some amazing ones in the Imperial War Museum, the Men in Road, um, and the Mule Track, and uh, uh, Tote Mere is in Tate, Britain. Um, and I was very sort of really interested in this kind of sort of carnage and these kind of almost sort of heaving sort of landscapes, these sort of landscapes in sort of turmoil or in the aftermath of some sort of um, sort of disaster or sort of flux. So let me close that one. I'll show you another one of these. This is this is Prairie. So it was made around the same time. Um, so it, on the same sort of theme. 
And as you can see, this one has these kind of almost like these sort of pools of kind of sort of yellow, um, almost like some sort of some sort of toxic, something's almost sort of leached out of the soil and has sort of poisoned these sort of pools. I mean, I think they're actually, um, I think they, those bits of yellow came from a sort of shampoo advert or something like that. And you can see here, there's bits of um, uh, animal skin print that I've kind of worked in amongst the, um, amongst the sofas and amongst these um, almost a little bit like sort of Eve sort of tange sort of anthrop anthropomorphic and sort of organic forms. I mean, I've kind of recontoured everything and built things up to look like kind of sort of sort of trees or um, yeah, sort of rocks or sort of creatures. I mean, so, so I, I mean, the, the, the sort of genealogy of the work was that then I began to, I started, I was, I was, I wanted to solve the problem of the sort of interior, interior of the work. Um, it felt a little bit kind of sort of static and still within these kind of sort of very straight edges. So in the end, I started to kind of collage the images um, and all these bits and pieces that I found directly onto the wall surface. Um, and they and they sort of ended up um, breaking free of the sort of restraints of the sort of edges of the picture plane. And I ended up collaging these big kind of um, compositions all over the sort of wall surface all sort of held together those bits of wallpaper in there all kinds of bits of sort of natural history bits of sort of technology um in these very sort of swirling kind of sort of sort of baroque masses of forms that ended up very much sort of colonizing colonizing spaces um so and then eventually eventually they became whole sort of environment so I'll just show you sort of one of that time and then I can lovely and this was yeah so I began to sort of work in work with um interiors and make these sort of quite site specific um environments working with all kinds of found sort of fabric and images and sewing these kind of quite organic forms and then composing them um in in environments, um, just show you. Yeah, that's another one. So yeah, it's another one of the same from the same house. So, so they yes, yeah, so they became much more sort of site specific things, and they had by this time they'd sort of really sort of broken out of the picture plane, and they were sort of composed through a space, um, and often making quite a sort of dialogue with the architecture, as you can sort of see here. Um, Sort of, sort of contrast and working, working within a, working within a given space. So that was sort of like the early, that was like the early part of these, these sort of collages. And then last year, I, I, I was really interested in, um, because I often make work as a response to sort of the space around me and things going on within my environment. And I was really interested in, in making something about. Um, the charity shops, I mean, there were so many charity shops, and I began to think about these sort of post retail kind of landscapes and all of this kind of stuff and waste that's left behind or discarded or thrown away. Um, and I and I began to, so I thought I'm, I'd be quite interested to somehow kind of go back to the work that I made back in 2006 and sort of update it or, or work with those references again and I, I started to go into the charity shops and take photographs um, of all these of all these sort of glassware fabric fur um, you can see in this one um, you've got this you've got a fur which is sort of a fur coat and then there's this sort of the sky which is sort of t-shirts and other bits of fabric and these almost like these sort of sort of um these sort of glass forms in the foreground that are on top of um like a hold or like a, a an orange hold all um with these kind of black binoculars you can see these little bits and and creating these landscapes um and these are these are done actually mainly on an ipad um which so it's really a case of um so taking photographs and then pulling the images into um, an app called Procreate um, and then 
reconfiguring them, using the eraser tool to sort of, yeah, cut into them and cut away. And then again, sort of layering them and composing the different elements to sort of create a sense of space, um, sort of repositioning them, building up, building the forms up into new, um, uh, in, into these into these sort of terrains. Um, and again, there's sort of references to sort of this one has sort of references to sort of deserts and um, so they, yeah, so there's, there's, let me show you. Sorry, I'm just, just trying to come out of, whoop. sorry, I'm just trying to work out how to, this one doesn't seem to, ah, that's it. As you can see. So in this one I'm working, I've, I've found lots of quite sort of interesting glassware in these sort of various sort of shops um, and lots of quite interesting sort of crystal, crystal sort of forms um, and taking the taking the sort of motifs, as you can see, there's a little almost looks like a little tree on the background and what looks like sort of these little sort of crystalline kind of mountains um, and, and various sort of structures. Um, and I mean, I'm sort of quite, I mean, I'm really sort of interested in, in, in um, sort of science fiction type things. I'm, I'm really into kind of ballard. Um, and I've just read, uh, which I think was a fantastic book, The Crystal World by Ballard, where everything starts to become these sort of crystal, um, everything becomes encased in crystal um, and um, everything sort of transforms and changes. And I'm just really interested in that idea of kind of transformation of taking these sort of objects and sort of, yeah, just basically sort of reconfiguring them and transforming them into, into, you know, into these new, into these sort of landscapes or architectural forms, um, you know, what might come out of um, all of this waste stuff that we sort of throw away, how, how might it have, you know, how might it be given sort of another life in a way, and also, so I'm interested. Also, I mean, I've always been obviously really interested in the in sort of the environment. So I, you know, I'm interested in the way that this then references back to the landscape, back to the environment, um, and 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 sort of ideas of sort of waste. And yes, yeah, so this one is this one is called Colony. Um, and and I found this amazing sort of silvery coat in um, in a in a in a shop. Um, it was just like sort of an anorak. So I photographed it from lots of different angles. And again, working in um, uh, working in uh, Procreate, I was able to sort of change. I was able to sort of manipulate all of these forms and sort of replicate them and, and arrange them into what look, almost looks like a kind of sort of a rocky sort of rocky landscape um, and then in the background you can see what looks like what is a sort of a cliff face which is this kind of sort of ruched sort of fabric and then a kind of I think what it is it's like a sort of like a glass like a, a glass form was like a sort of plant or an explosion that you can see sort of appearing right at the back in the in the in the background um, and the blue forms which could be you know architectural structures or egg cases or um i, I don't know something something even sort of you know something organic is i think they were all sort of old lampshades um and it was sort of wonderful working with sort of te technology because obviously you can change the scale of things and you can um, you know, you can put things back and you can make things smaller. Everything's so, so you know, everything's so responsive. Um, and uh, and so, you know, you, you as you sort of obviously practice on your software, you can, you know, you you begin to be able to do things that you weren't able to do to begin with and 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 and, and get some quite sort of exciting effects. Um, but again, what I've what I've what I tend to do is I tend to um, also sort of print out quite a lot of extra things so I can I can reconfigure the edges in different ways. Um, I think um, I can sort of add on um, or develop the work um, after after I've printed out the kind of main main part of it. Um, 
I think the work is, I think these more recent ones, I'll show you another couple. I think they're, I mean, they're, for me, they're much sort of less sort of apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic than the earlier work. Um, and also, as you can see, the, the um, I've used, the material doesn't go right to the edges of the picture, picture play. It doesn't go right to the edges. Um, um, the, the, they're much more sort of contained and they're quite small pieces. I mean, they're only sort of about sort of 30, 30 by 40 centimetres. Um, so they're quite sort of contained worlds that you kind of sort of look into. Um, and, I, and I wanted to keep the scale quite small um, because I think then you, you kind of respond to them in a more sort of imaginative way, you know, rather than something much sort of bigger or very big, which can often be sort of quite theatrical. Although I'm, I'm quite, I think I'm quite influenced by kind of sort of cinema in my work. I always feel like there's something quite kind of cinematic about a lot of the kind of imagery that I make. I mean, I really love kind of films. So I think there, there are those aspects, I think, in the work. A couple more. So this one is, um, I think, called Wall, Wall at the Edge of Night. And it's as you can see, these kind of lampshades, they, well, they are actually lampshades. It looks like a wall, but they were these old sort of lampshades I saw in a shop that I've kind of created almost this kind of wall. Um, and then these little multicolored pathways are the tops of sort of video boxes that go, DVD boxes that go into the background. And you can see these kind of sort of hovering forms in what looks like a kind of sky. I think it was sort of fabric and bits of glass that I, 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 I found and, uh, I thought that would make it that would make a good sky so I've put these in but again the elements are quite um the elements as in a lot of the work I mean it's very sort of ambiguous um and often sort of hover between sort of something kind of man-made or something kind of sort of organic um and I'm sort of really interested in that sort of um there's those sort of slippages I suppose and that sort of ambiguity um, in terms of sort of identity. I mean, everything is so sort of, you know, transformed into something else, something new, something different. I mean, it's very much, I suppose, about sort of exploring sort of appearances and, and, and you know, um, and also, and, 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 and value as well, looking at things in, in you know, something discarded and, and, reconfiguring reconfiguring it and sort of putting it out in a different way because a lot of the stuff is used it's really sort of old tat I mean it's really sort of you know cheap stuff that I've kind of been sort of intrigued by um but and then yeah and working with that I think there's yeah there's just one more sorry I apologize for the photograph of the last one but this is um this is one of the most sort of recent ones and I've started to incorporate the kind of figure and the body into the work. Um, this one has, I think has what it's almost like quite a sort of classical, classical feel, almost like a kind of sort of courtyard and you've got that kind of green kind of column and these kind of, almost it like could be some kind of statues um, and this kind of sort of path going off into the background. Um, so yes, and these are, and as you can see, I mean, these sort of curved, curved sort of sections on the floor. I mean, that's a piece of sort of straight material, but obviously in, you know software you know you can kind of you have these kind of distort tools and these different things that you can use to you know you know everything becomes very sort of malleable and you can kind of reconfigure it in all kinds of ways um but a lot of the time i just like to use you know i i tend to kind of use the work as i found it i mean obviously i cut it i cut it out um and reposition it but i, I often don't distort things i mean i quite like leaving things as I photograph them, but just changing the scale or just putting, yes, putting things in, in different ways. I mean, that sort of creates the sort of strangeness, I suppose, is the sense that you can sort of recognise things. They're sort of, um, sort of disguised, but sort of not always. So there's, it's quite interesting. You can, you know, you can sort of see, see, see the sort of origin, this sort of origin of the identity of the sort of thing that I'm using or, or make a guess at what it is, or that looks a bit like that. So, um, so this is, yeah, so this is what I've been, what I've been working on. So, <laughs> so yes. So 
I think that's that's pretty much. Me. I was just I was just wondering whether there's anything I wanted to add. Um, yes, I was just. I suppose I would just say that I suppose I feel that they're they're not sort of they're not kind of sort of post apocalyptic, but they're probably quite edge of dystopian. I I sort of feel about the work. I think they have they do tend to have quite a kind of dystopian feel. I think about them, there's something quite sort of dystopian or certainly sort of edge of dystopian. But again, I kind of like to, you know, that it's not something I like to sort of stipulate. I just like to sort of, you know, making the work, I'm putting it out there. And I often allow the kind of materials to find their own, their own life, their own way. I mean, I put them together. I don't often, you know, I don't often have an idea of what something is going to look like. I mean, I like that sort of sense of, um, sort of experimentation, I suppose, and what happens if I do this and what happens if I bring this in and what happens if I take that away. Um, and that's also why I've, I've, I've started to kind of make more of the work again in sort of post-production where you kind of, you know, you, you kind of print out a certain section and then you're building it up with other elements that you've printed out because then you get a sense of more sort of a sense of sort of spontaneity I suppose and something else can happen um that you you know you didn't sort of envisage but you've you know there is that there is that potential um and I like that um what else can I just mention um, I think that's I think that's I think that's I think that's pretty much sort of covered it really <laughs> pretty much I mean I'd love to hear some questions shall I go back to should I, should I press stop share now? Is that right? Yeah, that'd be great. And we can uh, go to questions. Thank um, you. Sorry, was that enough, well, Alice? That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, I, I wasn't um, sure. Your point about the um, when you were talking about the, the, uh, the images and the experimental process, that was one of the questions I'd written down to ask you yeah. whether you had a preconceived idea in your head what you were going to make or whether it was an organic process. So that was really nice to hear. Um, I was just curious how long they took to make uh, roughly um, or does it completely vary? I think it varies really. Um, I think, um, you know, it's like some, I, I have to, to be honest with you, I, th I think it's a very inexact science because I don't like to have that sort of sort of preconceived idea. Cause actually if you sort of engage in what you're doing you could end up something far more interesting through just playing in a way and I think that's what I'm I, I think that that sense of sort of play runs through all of my artistic work I mean if you know you can see that in the world um and so um you know I I I, I yes so I, I I I tend to work in quite an intuitive way with what I'm with what I'm doing and you know sometimes you'll have an idea like for example you know you might say oh I really like that form. that would make a really good architectural shape so you might you know you might make work that has those sort of architectural structures but then um you know that might be sort of about it I mean I I you know I don't worry about going back to something that perhaps I was exploring or you know, it's like this sort of backwards and forwards. I think it's, I think it's good to keep that kind of spontaneity and to be open to new sort of possibilities, because then it sort of keeps everything sort of moving forward. Then, but I, I but then I mean the other thing is I would say is that um, you know the hit rate isn't always that good. I have to say, so I you know there are loads that just don't work, and I do find the thing is it's really interesting when you're working on the iPad is actually what looks good on the iPad doesn't always look good once it's printed out or doesn't always work as well. So, you know, you think, oh, this is going to have, you know, this is going to have real potential, this piece, and then you print it out and you start to finish it and it just doesn't. Whereas actually something that looks less promising sometimes works, ends up working really, really well. So I think you, you kind of, it's like anything sort of artistic, isn't it? I think you, you know, you you you're you know. It's important to have these. It's important to experiment. And it's important to. I mean, you learn from your mistakes and you learn from what works and what doesn't. And but it's interesting. I don't think there is. It's really interesting because I you know I don't think that there's a formula. And I think that's what's really interesting because then you get that nice kind of variety of kind of approaches and iconography and imagery and you know. And I like sort of playing with all of that stuff and you know each piece actually looks quite different or has its own identity yeah yeah great thank you um so there's a question in the chat um 
um, oh no, it's not a question, sorry. Just some, just some lovely feedback. Um, I'll let you read them in your own time, but uh, we've got some people with hands up. Let's have a look. I think Andrew put his hand up first. Would you like to? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, um, I was interesting. You were talking about playing and experimenting with the work. Um, I'm interested, um, you know, you went from collage to cutting out to a very, from a very physical um, start, which, which is quite, um, I guess, physically liberating to the confines of a, an iPad, which I suppose is um, technologically liberating. Yes. Um, and as a photographer who works with digital a lot, I sometimes find the screen um confines me right and want to print and get off the screen yes where it almost seems like yeah, your experiments taking you towards the screen but yes. then i'm sensing that you're actually printing and going away from the screen again so yes. i'm wondering do you do you feel very differently about working with the the two different mediums, you know, the, the physically collage cutting out to, to working on an iPad, is that experience quite difficult, different? I mean, I, I, mean, I, I think, yes, I, and it's interesting, isn't it, that sort of meeting place between the two things, because it's it's actually, you know, when I'm working on the iPad, of course, I'm actually sort of using the cutting tool, but you're doing it in the virtual, I mean, you're doing it on the computer, aren't you? Um, and I suppose I, I like really like the sort of materiality and the, and and the sort of physicality of the cutouts, but I like the way that I suppose I suppose what makes it slightly easier for me at the moment with with the work is because actually the work isn't that much bigger than than the actual iPad screen once it's printed out. I mean the collages are quite small, and therefore there's a certain um, it sort of translates quite well. Um, I, I suppose the only thing is again it's sort of you know talking about earlier thing I think you have to be I think you have to be careful with technology in the sense that you can become overly controlled it can it's a very controlled mm -hmm. environment um, and and I think I think you I think you can become a bit careful whereas actually what's quite nice about working in with the kind of cut and paste and the hands on bit is it can put a little bit of that because obviously once you've printed out say a, a finished image in a sense you're kind of sort of stuck with that aren't you whereas actually once you're if you're then cutting things up again and you're reworking you you can add that sense of you know the sort of play back into the work and the physicality and the changing you know there's you know you can change the work um, yeah. um after so i think I'm, I'm quite enjoying doing sort of both things the hands yeah. the, you know the working with the hand but also you know you know looking at these things within you know within on a screen or or you're making them and i, I mean you know i find i find the process of working with with the ipad actually really liberating in certain ways I mean, it's a very mm. economical way of working and you know you can make you know you can make you sort of you know make really really intriguing effects uh, and, and it does all kinds of strange things with space when you're working on a screen doesn't it when you're working on a computer that you know you you wouldn't necessarily <coughs> if you were working uh, you know with with sort of physical materials and you were just building a work um so i'm not does that sort of partly yeah, answer your yeah, question yeah, Andrew? yeah yeah it does yeah great <laughs> <laughs> Um, Siobhan's got her hand up as well. Um, would you like to go, Siobhan? Would you like to ask your question? Sorry, I mean. <laughs> um, she says, uh, I just you're typing my question in the chat. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I thought they were really interesting. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. hello. Yeah, they're really interesting, quite filmic. And I think what's good about art, though, unlike many contemporary films, is that they maintain the ambiguity. Whereas a lot of films have a closure, you know, the stories, everything's tied up at the end yes. and something reassuring. I like the fact your work wasn't reassuring. And I liked your phrase, edgy dystopian. And you also talked about corrupted pastorals. I thought you you talk very intelligently about intelligent work. Uh, but my question was, um, did you feel a bit like a film director? And if so, 
did you feel powerful creating these alternate worlds? Did it feel like you were creating other worlds? Yes, I think so. Yes, it does. And, and I think, you know, I think it's like sort of anything, isn't it? And I, and I think the sort of the joy of the joy of making and the joy of art and sort of sticking at it and the joy of process is that, you know, it's wonderful that you sort of learn as you go along and that there's a sort of wonderful um, thing, isn't there, in that sort of development. If you stick at something and you, you know, you learn to sort of, you know, you you know, you you have a sort of vision, and then through sort of process, you begin to be sort of build that vision, and you're sort of constantly feeding it. And I and I and I and I think that's really, you know, it's really exciting to go, you know, to make something um, that, you know, you know, it's it's it's. I mean, obviously, you're bringing all your experience and your, you know, everything your, you know experience when you're very young to all you know the, you know the world how you filter that how you bring it into your work um and 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 you know all the sort of forces in play and all those things around you and i um i suppose i've been making these landscapes for sort of like a long time and it features sort of prominently in the work and as i say i i'm you know, I really sort of love film, and I and I and I and I, and I think you know the work. I do often think of the work almost as kind of sort of film stills in a certain way. I mean, they are sort of panoramas, um, but as you say, they they don't offer a sense of closure. I mean, they are you know they're kind of they're sort of things on the move. You know, you don't know what's going to come in next or what's going to change, and that's what sort of you know that's you know they're caught at a certain moment. Um, and I, or, you know, they, they're seen at a certain moment or from a certain angle. And, you know, you, and I think that what's sort of interesting is that idea, especially when you see the forms in space, that idea that you can imagine walking around them, the way that you inhabit them, the way that your eye travels through these spaces and around these different sort of configurations. And of course, that's what's wonderful, like sort of creating this sense of sort of classical space, because as the viewer, you can sort of inhabit them as if you were, you know, a little bit like being in a kind of virtual environment. You know, you kind of walk it, you can walk through these spaces now. So perhaps that's what I'll end up doing next. But on the other hand, I like the, I like, I, I do like the, you know, I do like the sort of quite the quite small scale. And I like that fact that you I like the fact that there is a certain sort of limitation in what in how you can sort of inhabit these spaces as well. And, I, and they're almost kind of these sort of environments sort of sealed off in a certain sense, or you're looking into these kind of worlds. Um, but I, you know, I, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm sort of endlessly sort of fascinated, I suppose, by what you know how how you can make and 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 you know what can come out of all of this stuff and i suppose it's just about keeping kind of interested and you know and 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 yeah so i'm not sure is there did you have i sort of partly answered the question or answered the question yes <laughs> I think yeah you know, i mean what you're saying uh um <clears throat> corroborates a lot of things I've been writing about your work because I've been looking at it so yeah I think it'd be great to see it 3D and to see it in different formats yes well it's sort of interesting because obviously as you can see from the earlier work that I showed you there is that kind of you know there is that sort of um development where it ends up becoming um you know the pieces gradually you know, they end up sort of breaking out of the picture of uh, uh picture plane and then becoming in the end becoming actually sort of quite big sculptural environments and I've made a lot of those types of things but and it's all collage in the end I mean it all comes from those you know it's really interesting because I was showing a curator quite a couple of weeks ago the work and he said it's so interesting Adam when you show me your uh, installation work because I can see where this work comes from it's like I can see these landscapes I these these images come from those spaces and I and, and it's really nice to have that dialogue back and forth and and you know that play of perception between 2d and 3d and things in space and and how we you know how we how we negotiate and how we you know our perception how we sort of explore all these kind of different dimensions you know how i suppose in a way you know how we make sense of the world isn't it in the end how you know how we navigate um the sort of complexity of the world you know? yeah and just one little final thing i just realized that your work is probably about the same size as a computer screen yes it is yes yes 
yes, yes. Uh, um, um, small things. Um, the first ones I showed you were more sort of A2, so, so A1, so they, so they were quite bigger. I mean, I made some really huge ones actually, those early collages, but I, I've, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I mean, I'm, I'm really keen to keep making the collages. I'm actually translating a lot of the imagery now into sort of chalk and pastel drawings on black paper, um, quite kind of spectral kind of sort of landscapes. And I'm thinking of actually turning these into whole, environments these huge kind of wall drawings on you know and and making these sort of classical spaces if you could actually step through into these spaces through the wall so it's sort of exciting because there's you know there's kind of potential and, and how can I work with this and and you know I think feel, again sort of film can be really exciting so yes so we'll see what happens but I've, I've learned to sort of pace myself as I've got on because sometimes I've I felt like I've self-sabotaged in the past by kind of rushing on too quickly and ending up kind of losing the thread. So, so I'm, yes, I'm pacing myself a little bit more. I'm going slower, yes. But it'll, I mean, you know, these developments happen. So over, over time, so we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> um, Helen, I think you might have just um, answered Helen, this one. I think you might have just answered this one. Um, about the size of um, the earlier one. About the size of the earlier one. Oh, did you want to ask anything else? Yeah, Helen, yeah, yeah. Or did that cover it? No, that covered it really because I was thinking um, they um, they are clearly fascinating close up. At standing back, looking at them from a distance, um, will you know will give you that um, that overall. Um, impact um that's um i just I, I found them really very um when you said nash yes i thought yes <laughs> i could see that <laughs> and um, they are um very striking i thought very um evocative sorry i'm not articulating what i can no, 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 you are. No, that's great. No, thank you. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Hi, can I just ask a quick one? Um, what Please. Have you actually created films from these works at all? Um, no, I haven't. No, I haven't yet. But I'm, 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 I'm just working on. I'm working. You know, I, I'm sort of thinking about how I, how I might do that mm. in a sort of interesting way. You know, because I, I, you know, I want to do something. If I was going to, you know, I mean, I mean, there, <laughs> there will be a way of doing it, but I'm not quite sure yet how I, how I want to do it. Mm. Um, and I and I think that you know, um, technology is sort of a fa it's a fa it's a fantastic and fascinating resource. But it's you know it's like you know you have to learn all the programs to be able to in a way to you know, I mean you can learn them as you go along, and I'm I'm, I'm sure that's probably the best. And once you start having an idea, then you start working with the technology, and and it's a learning curve. Um, but I'm not quite sure yet how I. How I'm, how I will sort of translate that into film, but mm -hmm. those works into film. But I do like, the, I mean, I like the idea, and I'm sure, I mean, I like the idea of perhaps starting to kind of create these quite sort of virtual worlds with these mm -hmm. forms in some way, so you'd be able to kind of walk around things. And I think that would be really fascinating because you'd see all these kind of sort of references to kind of these thrown away things, but it would be within a kind of, yeah. A virtual environment I think that could be really interesting and you know so so one thing at a time I'm still yes I'm I'm yeah I'm still on my cut and paste at the moment but I'm yeah but I'm you know I'm I'm using sort of technology but it's not you know I'm sure it will become yeah it will it will evolve into new things I'm sure yeah <laughs> um there's a question from um Nadim as well he asks, will you be using more human figures? 
Yes, I think I will be. Yes, I will. And I think I mean, I think that's the sort of direction that I'm taking the work in at the moment. I quite like um, I like I like the sense of sort of scale um, that that kind of brings into the work. And I like the fact that the kind of it brings in the sort of human reference um, into these sort of quite dystopian or edge of dystopian sort of spaces. Um, um, and it's kind of quite interesting working with the figure in terms of you know the figures become almost sort of interchangeable with the other elements so the way that i'm you know cutting them and contouring them um is is almost in almost quite similar to the way that i'm working with all the other objects um so there's again there's that sort of quite there's a, quite a lot of sort of ambiguity between the different references um but i you know i like that i like the idea of sort of adding the sort of human yeah the presence and the sort of scale as well um, that that sort of brings in. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, if anyone's got any other further um, questions, comments, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and then shall we go straight over to you, Susan? Are you ready? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you. That was really lovely, Adam. Thanks. Interesting. I just noted down some of the things that we share together, and I've got uh, slippage, ambiguity, play, and being drawn to cheap stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Right. Let me just see if I can. Um, what happens when I share my screen? If that's okay. Uh, okay. Oh, fantastic. Um, uh, right. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Alison. It's really nice to meet everybody uh, from all the different places, including up north, uh, which is fantastic. So I'm down in Wiltshire on the edge of the border here with Hampshire. And I work as uh, I'm an artist. I suppose you would categorize the work that I do as uh, object and installation and film and a mix. I just move between them all the time, really. Um, and I also curate uh, an NPO arts organization in Hampshire part time. So a bit of curating, but, but uh, normally I'm, I'm facilitating crits for other artists. I normally avoid them myself, but I thought <laughs> I had a rash moment around Christmas and I thought I really need to get out and do something like that. So here I am, please be gentle with me. <laughs> Right, um, so the work that I've got to show you is all work that I've done since the lockdown, really. And um, it, it uh, has come out of, partly from lockdown experience. Uh, uh, can everybody hear me okay and see the screen okay? Yep, yeah, good. Okay. Um, so the work that I make, uh, doesn't really, it's not seeking to have a conclusion or, or um, uh, there's nothing resolved about it necessarily, but it's very much around play again. And um, in a sense, I kind of see the work that I do like a child building bricks and, and deassembling them and assembling them over again without any particular purpose other than to, to see what happens when when they do that and what sort of comes comes out of that. Uh, the last few years for me have been quite turbulent, really. There's been a lot of changes in life. Um, but at the same time, and of course, those changes in life have just been kind of intensified by so much change outside of personal life as well, you know, societal change, which we've all been through. But at the same time, I undertook a master's degree in theology, imagination, and culture. And that was based at uh, an old school of theology that's been there since medieval times uh, in the cathedral close here in Salisbury. And um, it, take, it took a theology really in its widest sense as a cultural approach to meaning making within the age we find ourselves. Uh, it had a strong focus on art and film particularly film, actually. Um, but it gives space to explore ideas around the transcendent within art, which is always something that I've been drawn to. 
um, our hybrid existence as digital and unembodied selves and to pursue the idea of a theology of new materialism and what, what that means really um, uh, as we share the world with materials and, uh, and nature and, you know, kind of lost that connection and now we're seeking to re-establish it again as we are concerned about our environment and and um realize that actually what we do as humans has has an impact on materials and vice versa as well and nature um so at it at, at the best at its best times in the course it, it was fantastic but actually, <laughs> there were points when it really threatened to unhinge me when we went into AI and, and the evolution of our robotic selves and things like that actually was really quite, quite difficult to digest at times. Um, but then the lockdown happened as well. So all this was going on uh, in my head as well as lockdown descended. And lock I know lockdown, I, I appreciate, was horrific for so many people. But for, for me, there were difficult bits, but there were also um very positive bits actually because I had time to spend in the studio on my own um with with a sort of bricks put on the arts organization a little bit that we were you know I was constantly um rushing to to um produce things for um and also uh life became very much about the house and the family and um at the same time I also ran a a curatorial project online called Housebound, which explored that idea with a number of artists online as well. Uh, so these things were kind of swirling around my head. Um, but I've always found the house and the garden to be a sort of microcosm of the cosmos, a space where the profound and the mundane are sort of in constant cohabitation together. Um, to give you a bit of background, I grew up in Belfast in the 70s during the Troubles. Uh, and houses there were often immaculate in contrast to the kind of violent chaos outside. Um, my mother had bipolar and she would redecorate often um, when she was experiencing a high really and, and to cope with, with those highs and lows. But there was a real kind of utopian optimism about redecorating in those days you know as a child with all the bold sort of colors and, and modernist you know designs that we had um and it's something that I've explored a lot it I actually explored it through the master's degree um the idea of the first universe which Gaston Bachelard spoke about when he wrote Poetics of Space this first universe that we create around ourselves in the house and the garden um which is a sort of mini universe of the universe that's outside of that. So while redecorating and arranging objects seem like small actions, they actually, you know, it could be said that they've a, a profound connection to um, creating a universe of meaning within the space around us. Um, and, I, and while I was doing the master's degree, I was studying a little bit of Marcia Eliad, who, who wrote about the sacred and profane, and actually says that every time there's a house move, um, we reenact the creation of the cosmos and the housewarming party is just that it, it are the remains of those big celebrations that were in early primitive times of, of creation and creating a space and bringing order to the chaos. So that order and chaos are two things that interest me really. And, and you know, decorating in the home and creating order within the chaos um, is something that's interested me a lot. So for instance, previous works, sculptural works are often kind of like um, stage sets really that, that without, you know, which the figures have left, which have um, objects and materials that would be familiar to us in such a way, but put together maybe in a way that's slightly surreal. But anyway, um, to get back to what I was doing in the, in the studio in the lockdown, uh, at like, <laughs> like Adam I have a lot of bits and pieces and old magazines and things like that and I had an old flower arranging book from the 60s um and it had it has the most strange uh kind of futuristic almost modernist sculptural pieces and that 
top left image is one of them uh, mm -hmm. and the one in the middle there which i think comes from a japanese form of flower arranging which um i wrote down oh it's ikebana i don't know whether that's pronounced right but it means making flowers alive and i like this idea of exploring that relationship with nature we where we take it into the home and we put it in our wallpapers and we recreate it but it's so distanced from actually um the wildness of nature it, it, it's us controlling again the environment and ordering and bringing harmony and somehow in the lockdown when everything was so disordered and 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 chaotic and quite frightening this idea that you could order things and have some control was of interest to me um now at the same time i was doing this master's degree and i don't know about your screen oh but on my screen, there's a, a, a an I um, an image uh, from late antiquity or, or early medieval times, maybe. Um, but I think in my screen, your faces are covering it. But actually, there's a little hand coming out of the corner, and the hand is the uh, Manus Dei, which is the hand of God. And uh, in iconography, it was inappropriate to try to represent God at all in those days. You couldn't do that. Uh, so this disembodied hand appeared and that was intervention from a greater force coming into the world to try and, and bring order and make sense of it. And interestingly, in this flower arranging book, there is a disembodied hand of a woman that constantly prunes and cuts and arranges and um i went on to make this work here which uh is called vibrant cultivars and uh it has the hand from the flower arranging book and on the other side uh, it's snipping and i like the idea that this female hand might be the control that's coming in um that's disembodied that we cannot see but to make sense of everything the the kind of seedlings that are growing in it are um from cotton wool balls that have been put they're dipped in latex and on florist wire um and they kind of um are in clay bases but i think what interests me in my work is a slightly ludicrous and ridiculous attempt to to make meaning for ourselves so um you know they're very cheap materials and the materials that we're very familiar with and it's kind of also trying to imagine a future thing that we don't know yet but all we can use to imagine that are the things that we have of the past really the materials that are familiar to us it's a constant um trying to make sense of things out of the out of what we can cobble together from what what we have around us uh so the next one, uh, I went, I have to say, um, you know, in the past, I've done a lot of work to commission where, you know, you've been given a theme and uh, all the rest of it. And in the last couple of years, what curating at the arts organization has been able to let me do is to just make work for my own kind of pleasure and, and follow my own, you know, path of interest. So. I then went on to make some little dioramas from the um, that were inspired by this idea of creating scenes and ordering things. Uh, and in it, there are tiny little dolls which are crawling through landscapes. Um, and uh, and these are kind of magnified by a magnifying screen that you would use if you were. Uh, losing your eyesight to read a book or whatever. Um, but basically they're also a little bit of like a vivarium. So we're almost studying the, you know, this this little figure inside. Um, and I was thinking about Brave New World, which was a, a book that I was reading at the time um, about um, babies and reproduction produced in these odd, odd ways. So anyway, there's a series of these little dioramas and actually there's a backdrop in them um, which can be changed for different ones uh, so some are natural environments some are built environments and things like that 
that that I don't know how you resolve that in a gallery, but I just love the idea that you might have a sculpture or a piece of artwork that you can change and alter um, yourself uh, and change the narrative of. So. Um, Lovely. At the same time, Dispensary Gallery wanted to do an interview and I did this interview. This is another bit of work that I was making, a bit like your collages, actually, um, Adam, where they're kind of, except that they're 3D collages of materials and objects. Um, they're often little bits of dolls and things. I have to say, I have had four children and the one thing that's really kind of come to me out of that is this interest in the environment we live in. For children, the surreal is really mixed up with, with the everyday and, and they have no problem with that. So um, for instance, you know, I would look under the sofa and there'd be a disembodied head or, you know, in the ice cream once there was a little pair of legs standing up. So. <laughs> the idea of disembodied body parts is something that I'm quite interested in. Children have no problem with that. They're always taking them apart and leaving them around. They don't really, the strangeness of it doesn't, doesn't really bother them. And um, so the surreal in, in what we experience every day, uh, mixed up with the profound and the mundane, I, I find really interesting. And um also the little, so that's where the little dolls and the dioramas came from. And actually then I began to experiment with myself inside them. And for the interview, as I'm speaking, um, it, I get smaller and smaller until I disappear at the end. And I don't know what that means, but I do think all this lockdown business was just, <laughs> there was something about the vulnerability of the small figure that I'm really interested in exploring. And, and now I'm doing the work for an exhibition called Insect Odyssey, where we had to choose a book uh, to uh, around insects. And I chose Kafka's Metamorphosis. So I've been doing some film work where I've shrunk myself in different environments that move through different environments. So it's very playful work again. Um, this is work that I'm doing for a show in the summer, um, which is really a mashup of different things. I've been taking it natural um, plants. So the, the plant that you see, I mean, this is not finished yet. So these are just bits and pieces really, but the plant that you see there with the balls hanging off it, they are formiums and anybody that's had a formium might know that they flower every few years and when they flower you don't notice them beginning to flower and then you turn around and there's this enormous spike which is about 15 foot tall um with a small flower on top so actually i've saved the spikes and they and i've begun to paint them in in kind of heavy household gloss colors uh, that um, have some resonance for me. And they actually uh, are, are a kind of mashup of, of some strange ornaments we used to have in the house um, at the time uh, on top of the TV, which were like little trees with balls on them, um, which everybody had in their house at the time uh, in the seventies. But again, it's creating a sort of garden with these bits and pieces of, of memory of material and color. And also taking what's natural and trying to improve on it almost, which is the ridiculous thing. Um, but it's this idealist, idealized view that we had that we're beginning to understand was incorrect, where we could actually take nature and make it into something uh, almost better. Um, and, and take it into the home and, and live with it. And in the background, um, on the right hand side, there's a, a film that goes with it actually, which as you can see, there's a face in the roses. So I, I do a lot of um, work with found footage and film as well and, and the surreal when I come across it. And actually there's something called the 100 layers of makeup challenge, which, um, 
was done a, a, year, a couple of years ago where young people will put a hundred layers of foundation on and as a challenge, but it becomes, their face then becomes extremely surreal and, and um, arresting. So they're actually in the flowers and um, counting the layers through uh, as they put the makeup on. So they're counting the layers, layers one, layers two, layers three, layers four. Um, and this is the kind of backdrop for this strange garden, which is um, drawn from these influences now um that's one of my daughters in the corner and it's from christmas two years ago and she's got in her hands she's got a t-shirt that says i just really love peng i just really like penguins and she's got a penguin glass and a penguin uh plant uh a duvet a penguin in the background, there's a penguin candle and she's got a penguin blanket over her shoulders. And um, I'm just interested in how we take images and, and kind of latch onto them and then repeat them and repeat them and surround ourselves by them. And they become so cut free from their original moorings and become something of themselves. And then we drop them after a, a year or so or after and move on to another one. Um, and so I've been doing a similar thing with a film that I came across, a little bit of film footage of an iceberg um, collapsing, which, uh, you know, if you think about it environmentally is quite a major uh, event. But I was more interested in this online image that became something that I was obsessed with. So I began to, I tried to remake it in the physical world. So I made it in um, chicken wire and mod rock, uh, which obviously didn't collapse. But I was thinking about Aaron and the, and the penguin and, the, and this image that we grasp onto and repeat and repeat. So I've been repeating it in various forms. Um, I, I may never see an iceberg in my life, uh, but somehow this image, you know, I can take and I can bring it into my home and I can put it everywhere. And it, 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 it's, it's so far removed actually from uh, what it is in itself. The image becomes the thing. And I've made, so I've made tiny ones, which are like ornaments. Um, and I've made um, this one recently, which uh, is like a drawing in space. And um, it's not quite solid. It's almost like a diagram, but that's as far as I've got really. <laughs> so all of this is working towards something. I'm not quite sure what. I don't know whether that makes any sense, <laughs> but I kind of, I, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying creating these, this, these world of objects and, and this environment. So these pieces will come together in an installation later in the year, actually. Um, but I think being through the master's degree in theology and imagination and culture as you know, and having this constant return to the lived space and how, what is order and what is chaos within that and what is surreal and what is real and how, and the mashup of all those things together. I think for me, making allows me to kind of play with those things and, and draw you know, we, we live each day in a linear way, maybe in the real world, but all the time it's not linear. You know, we're referring back and forward to different things. Uh, and I think art enables us to get that out into material. Um, and that's really what I've been doing. So that's it. I don't know if it makes any sense. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Thank you, that was really great. I think it made a lot of sense to me. Um, I work in similar ways. Um, I think there was a question. Um, 
Siobhan's asking about the gallery you mentioned, Spencer, Spencery Gallery. Uh, yes. Yeah. Spencer. The Spencery Gallery was an online uh, project in lockdown and it began to interview artists about lockdown and their experience. And then they got some funding to make that into a publication, actually. And I think they've just in the last month, they've now got a physical space. Um, so that's great. That's exciting. Um, yeah, it's great. Another, another question from Siobhan. She says, uh, your work is fascinating. Do you think being a mother affects how you make work? That's a great question. Well, <laughs> it certainly has affected how I've made work because you know I think uh, the frustration is always there that any time is fragmented time um and I guess now they they've literally all four of them you know moved out uh and went to university not that far apart because two are twins and some had kind of delayed it so they literally all went to university within a couple of years which should mean that there's lots of time actually, but time is still fragmented because I'm st I'm, I'm, I'm working, you know, in other places as well. Um, but yeah, definitely. I really, I think it's enabled me to appreciate the play aspect of learning and making, and that's really important. And, and also the surreal has really struck me you know, about the way uh, they they deal with objects and, and materials and things like that. And I think sometimes, you know, there are disembodied bits in my work and people, especially people that I know, uh, are quite distressed by that sometimes. And they'll go into the studio and they'll come, oh, you know, how can you go in the studio with that in there? But somehow, if you live in a child's world, all those things, you know, make total sense to you. And I find that very interesting. <laughs> I don't know what that answers. <laughs> I agree with you about the, um, the playful aspect of learning and mm. that kind of being fresh from motherhood rather than being in our own personal distant childhood. That's a great point. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Yeah, I, I, I'm just really sort of intrigued by the way that you make um, things feel very sort of alien and the way you sort of take things out of context mm -hmm. and, and you, you, you're creating sort of worlds from things that are, you know, often sort of very tangible, but the way that you kind of, um, uh, the way that you present them and, and juxtapose them with other things is just, I find really interesting, you know, like the, those kind of roses and this mm. and the sort of makeup with mm. these kind of black balls. It's such an interesting way you take things out of a context or you remove them from our space or show them in a different way and make them very, very sort of remote in a certain way. I find, I think that's really interesting. And also, I'm also really intrigued by a lot of your, your images, because I'm not always sure what I'm looking at. And I find that really interesting. So, so this one almost looks like a kind of drawing that's done on the photograph rather than a photograph mm -hmm. of a sculpture. And I think that crops up again in some of the other images. I, I find them, I think they're really intriguing documents. I mean, I just find them they're very sort of ambiguous, but I think that's really interesting, just as, as they are. Yeah, thanks, they are ambiguous. They're also, an awful lot of them are very, are quite fragile and uh, some of them are made from glass. And the one um, of the box with the semi-transparent hands on the outside things, they're all nearly impossible to photograph actually. And I, <laughs> really, really difficult to photograph. That would probably be the biggest, issue that I have with my work um, and there are some pieces that you know d don't really ever photograph <laughs> and I haven't really found uh, I suppose making video is um, you know some people have suggested as a way around that um, but it is a it is a problem. 
but I, I really, I really like your sort of engagement with different materials and all your sort of different ideas and references is really sort of exciting. And I'm also really intrigued because I too picked up a book once on those sort of really kind of weird kind of flower arrangements, you know, the very kind of Japanese, very modernist yeah. flower arrangements. And so I know exactly what you mean by those because I, I've just picked up a book. It was thrown away in the library, which is on a table and you could pick them up. But I was fascinated by these photographs of these kind of modernist, you know, flower arrangements. They were absolutely bizarre. So it's really, it doesn't oh. surprise me at all that you've picked up on those because they're so, you know, they, they really are about your work, aren't they? They're such an embodiment of these sort of ideas. Yeah, they're very strange. And, and uh, yeah, I love them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're absolutely fascinating. But I mean, they're fascinating as much as, you know, in, in terms of our sort of relationship to nature, they're fascinating, aren't they? Yeah, aren't they? yeah. Little sort of controlled kind of mm. you know, universes where nature has an exact place. And well, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, they're so kind of, yeah, cold, aren't they? And precise yeah. and ordered. And, and that is sort of fascinating when, as you said, when you're controlling something that is... Sort of the opposite of that, you know, and it's. I know, you know. I know, and and as I said, that that Japanese translation of the word that they use, which means you know making flowers alive, like they're taking them out of nature and actually giving them more life than they than yeah. they, you know, <laughs> nature could. But it's still static, as you said, and strange and and alien. Mm, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Fascinating, yeah. Um, Deborah's commented uh, saying Ikebana tries to represent heaven, earth, and the human connecting the two. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. And Siobhan says, I see similarities in um, both your works um, in the use of found objects and the making of surreal images from the everyday. Yeah, mm. there's a some really nice um, resonances going on with your practices. Yes. It's, uh, yeah, it's sure. great. <laughs> Helen, do you? Can I Helen? Ask, uh, Susan, uh, thank you for your presentation and uh, um, your work is, is really fascinating. Um, can you tell us a bit about your master's degree? Um, theology, imagination and culture sounds really uh, <laughs> expansive, really. It what was expansive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's one of a very small handful of courses around the country, actually, which are investigating those things. And um, in, uh, but it is an interest that's growing. And uh, I think for the last year that I did it, there were a series of seminars at Goldsmiths that I was able to take part in online on those sort of subjects. Uh, which is the first time Goldsmiths has ever explored those sort of subjects. So it was really obvious that they were kind of pertinent um, fields at the moment. Uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was in the same theological college as, you know, that, that people were training for ministry and things like that. But it was a completely different course with, you know, we, we had, um, so there was a, there was certainly a religious element to it but we also had buddhists on the, which so the other people on the course you know there was a buddhist there was there was a jazz singer there were poets there was a whole mixture of people and um but yes if any if the only kind of it was a just an amazing experience we had uh deborah lure who's a um an art historian from edinburgh university who did the art side of things uh, and various other people, um, you know, introducing everything from sort of ancient theology, I suppose, through to uh, AI and, and robotics and things like that. So it was really fascinating, but it was very broad. So there was an awful lot to take on. <laughs> But uh, I mean, Sarum College is a really interesting place because it's also residential. So most people, apart from me, who lives beside it, most people actually came from other parts of the country. 
uh, and, and lived there for the course. So it was very much, it was almost like a retreat sort of thing, you know. Mm. What, what did you do your dissertation on? I actually did my dissertation on um, the house and it was actually on Reed's house as a as a, her a text as a text for hermeneutic um, kind of discovery and um, so it it went through the different so hermeneutics kind of turns things around and looks from all angles uh, so you know, it, it looked at it kind of culturally and socially and as well as um, theologically and, and um, kind of drew on Bachelard's, Gaston Bachelard's poetics of space around the house, but also on, on, on really ancient um, sacred notions of the house as a recreation of the cosmos, you know, so. And at the same time, I was running the house band exhibition online. Um, so everything was feeding into the, each other, so, which was really fascinating mm -hmm. at the time, but strange. <laughs> Thank you. Um, some more comments in the chat. I don't know if you can see them or whether you want me to read them out. Oh, I can get them. Hang on. Uh, interested in the work of Zoe Mendelssohn. Don't know Zoe Mendelssohn. I'll have a look. That's really great. I've, I, I, I don't know her work, but I have heard of her. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I went to, I did my MA at Wimbledon School of Art. So mm -hmm. I didn't know that she taught there. But I'll, I'll thank you for that. I'll have a look. I'll, I'll, I'll Google her mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, see if I can find some images. So thank, thanks for that tip. Mm. It's always good when, to see you sorry, um, I was just going to ask when you're, when and where your show is going to be um, this year, Susan. Um, there's one at APT Gallery uh, in June. It's on this. It opens the same day as the Queen's Jubilee. So I don't know whether anybody will be there or whether they'll all be watching the Jubilee. But um, that's been postponed for the last two years again and again and again through lockdown so but as you might know it's a very very tall gallery so I've had these very very tall pieces of work uh with the formium plants that I haven't been able to show in anywhere for a good while so um this has given me the opportunity to do some you know really tall work and the the one on insects and books is in will be in Salisbury Museum in June as well Brilliant. Yeah. Um, That's a great reason to avoid the jubilee. <laughs> sorry, I missed that. What did you say? <laughs> Siobhan said, a great reason to avoid the jubilee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Unless anybody has any more um, questions, uh, we can, we can wrap up and just thanks both of you for such great presentations, really inspiring. Yeah, a really great evening. Thank you. Really interesting and philosophical and everything seemed connected and yeah, invited lots of questions and con yeah, connections. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much for inviting us. <laughs>